for that as you will. Uh, but no, that's not what I'm here to be this morning. I'm not here to be a preacher. I'm here to let God speak and let God encourage and let God uh, grow within uh, individuals here and within a group here. So it's good to see you. It's good to be here with you again. I guess I'm the first guy to be able to test out the waters here with the pulpit on the floor, but I really do appreciate it. And I really appreciate what Brace had to say about it this morning, that uh, the one person who does deserve to be lifted high is Jesus himself. And that's what we're here to do this morning. And, we, and we've had a phenomenal service already. The songs we've sung, the prayers that have been given uh, have been uplifting and encouraging to me. Uh, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about this morning. Um, as you can see here on the screen, the topic is growing together through worship, through things like song and things like prayer. Uh, and that's, that's kind of our goal this morning to kind of see, uh, we're first going to take it and look at us as individuals and how we are personally in our prayer life and in our worship life personally, and then take it together to see how we can grow together and how it looks like to be with one another in a setting like this, to be able to worship God, to be able to lift his name up high in praise and to pray with one another and to pray for one another. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into I first want to describe this morning, uh, if I can turn this on real fast, maybe, I had issues with this last week, we're not working, uh, I also like when I get up here every time that Aaron has to come up and fix something, uh, so I think that's kind of the way I'll roll, um, that every time I get up here Aaron will have to fix something, so. Uh, there's a white screen on the computer as well, so I don't know what has to do with that, but. There we go. He works magic up here. He knows exactly what he's doing. So thank you, Aaron. Okay. So let's start off with talking about the objective of this lesson. I kind of hinted it already, but what we're, what we're going to do this morning is we're going to realize what personal song and personal prayer and fellowship within prayer and song means to us. Because a lot of the times we don't realize, and a lot of the times what, uh, something we miss is the, the value and what it personally means to us and what our, means to our relationship with God to be uh, strong in our personal song and prayer life, but also strong together as we sing and as we worship God uh, together in, in a setting like this. So what I want to do before we start this morning is I usually like to start off with a question, but this morning we're going to start off with a few definitions. I kind of want to define some terms that we're going to be talking about and kind of give you an idea of what I mean by prayer, by song, by worship this morning. So let's start and, and, and kind of clarify that prayer and song can be both described as acts of worship, right? Whether we're individually doing it as ourselves or coming together to do it, when we pray and when we sing to God, it's an act of worship. And worship is something that we do to praise and lift high the name of the Lord, right? We had Chuck read this morning Psalm uh, chapter 103. And I won't read it again, but we see just in the first verse here, David is explaining, uh, he's saying, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And this kind of gives us, this whole, this whole chapter here in Psalm 103 gives us this idea of what worship is and what it means to lift high the name of the Lord and what it means to bless him and thank him for everything he's done because that's what praise is, right? That's what worship is, to be able to let God know how we feel about him in the moment and that we understand what he's done for us and we understand that, God, you have done this for me. And that's exactly what David is doing here in Psalm chapter 103. He's letting God know, God, you have done so much in my life. God, you have provided for me time and time again, and not just me, but you've provided for us. Right? It says, bless the Lord, all my soul, for, and forget not his benefits. Verse 3, who forgives all your iniquity and who heals all your diseases. And goes on to talk about all these things that God has done, and that's why we worship him. It's praising him and lifting high his name. And we look at prayer as something as speaking with God through praise, thanksgiving, and requests. I have three passages here. The first one uh, uh, found in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, specifically in verse 10. It says, Therefore David blessed the Lord in the presence of all the assembly. And David said, Blessed are you, O the Lord God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. And that's where we get that praise part of prayer, right? David is showing us that when we pray, we can, we can bless the Lord and, thank, uh, and, and praise Him through that prayer. We also think of things like Thanksgiving in prayer when it says in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, specifically in verse 34, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. There is thanks to be given to God through prayer. When we pray to Him, we let Him know we're thankful for what He does, and we give Him requests. Right, specifically, I look at verse, uh, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 when it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. 
So when we approach him in prayer, we let him know that we, there's things in our life that we have requests about. There's things we're going through and we need his help and we ask for these requests. That's what prayer is in this setting. And then we look at song. Right? Song is lifting our voice, singing thanks to God and praise to God. Another uh, passage in Psalms, specifically in chapter 66, that, that uh, came to my mind, uh, it, it says here in verses 1 through 4, shout, to the, shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great your, is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praise to you. They sing praises to your name. And that's what song is. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit more this morning. That when we lift our voices in song, when we come together and worship God, it's praising him. It's letting God know that we are thankful and we praise him for what he's done in our life. So there's our four definitions this morning. This, this, I kinda, these are not like from the internet or anything. I kind of uh, took these in, in my own interpretation of each. Uh, but this is what I want us to understand going forward into this lesson, exactly what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and dive in and talk about first personal prayer and what that personal prayer looks like. And I, I have three things here on the board that you can see that I think that personal prayer includes. Let's first look at this first one saying pray, pray in private. I think we all know the Sermon on the Mount, right? Here, uh, talking in Matthew chapter 6, we, we get this explanation and this example of what we call the Lord's Prayer. And before Jesus gets into talking about what the prayer is, it says in verse 6, But when you pray, go into your room and shut your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And the point of this point here this morning is to let you know how important it is to have that p close personal relationship with God. That when you go into your room, as it's saying in Matthew chapter 6, when you go into private, it is just you and God. It has that, it has that secludity of when you are away from the world, you are away from everyone in this world that gives you the opportunity to really focus in and truly be, uh, to be in prayer and say, God, I'm here with you today. Just me and you, and this is what's on my mind. And, and Jesus lets us know here in Matthew chapter 6, that's what it looks like. And, and there's meaning in, in, uh, in, in coming together to, by ourselves inside, a, inside private to be with God. Just one-on-one one -on -one with God. And I want to say this morning that, that prayer is filled with emotion. We're going to talk about emotion a lot more with song, but I want, to, and, and, uh, I want to stress this morning that prayer is filled with emotion. That when you're talking to God, when you're letting your request and your, and your anxiety lifted upon Him, there's emotion in that. And we see in Psalm 34, 17, it says, When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their trouble. And here in Psalms, when it says the righteous cry for help, I take that literally. I see the people of the Lord crying to God, saying, I need your help. And I don't know about you, but I've been there, specifically in the shower. I don't know why in the shower I, I have deep um, uh, emotional prayers to God, but it's just a time to be away from everything. So I've been there a lot of times uh, to, when I'm praying to God, I am emotional. I start crying and have these emotions saying, God, I am in this time right now and I need you. I'm crying out for help. It is emotional. And I think God wants it to be emotional. I think he wants to, you to be vulnerable with him. And there's something to say about that. There's a lot of meaning into being vulnerable with God. That you are so comfortable with Him and you want to be, uh, Him to be the one you go to in prayers like this. That when you have this emotion, that when your life is so overwhelming, you go to God and you cry out to Him saying, Lord, I need you today. And He won't fail you. He'll be there and listening. He will listen to that prayer. Because all this comes together, that looks at our third point up here, saying having a personal connection with God. And when you have that personal connection with God, it allows your prayers to be more meaningful and to be more effective. When you have that personal connection, when you close off all the rest of the world, go into your room, shut the door, close off everything that's going on in the world and just have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you and God, that you're vulnerable with him, you're emotional with him, letting him know what is going on with your life it is special. And that's how prayer is supposed to be. And that's what your personal prayer is supposed to look like. Having that connection with God filled with emotion and just one-on-one -on -one privacy with him. So why should we pray? What's the benefit to praying? And I, I think it, it, it's, it's really, and I think the Bible explains it clearly, that it's our number one source of communication with God. Yes, we can read His Word and see what He's saying to us, but prayer gives us an opportunity to speak to God ourselves. Prayer gives us an opportunity to be one-on-one -on -one with, him, with Him and say what's going on in our lives. It's a communication source we have with our Father. Because if we didn't have prayer, how would He know? How would He give us the opportunity to let Him know what's going on our, with our lives? Because we all, I think, already understand he knows what's going on. 
But he gave prayer because he desires for us to speak with him. He desires for us to seek him out and talk with him personally about what's going on in our lives. It gives us this opportunity to talk about our struggles, our requests, and simply thanks to him. Because without prayer, we wouldn't have much ability to do that. We can pray to God saying thanks to him, thank, being thankful to him for what he's done in our lives. We can also pray to him for what's going on in our lives and our struggles, and then we can ask for things. God allows us to ask for things. Like it says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, right? You can ask for things. Let your requests be made known to God. And that's why we pray, and that's why it's so special. We have an ability to communicate with him. And how special is that, right? Uh, he put us here on this earth, with not, not by ourselves, though, but we have an opportunity to talk to him and tell him what's going on in our lives. So another question we can ask ourselves is, what should we pray for? Why sh if we have this ability to pray and we should pray, then what are things we should pray for? Well, I've already mentioned it a little bit, but this first point talks about our struggles and our sins. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18, it says, Praying at all times in spirit, with prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supp supplication for the saints. I wanted to use Philippians 4, 6 again, but I thought this connected within uh, praying to God as well, that to let him know that what we're going through in our life, the struggles, even the sins that we're committing, that we let God know that what we're going through and that we're struggling with, and that he's there to listen, he's there to help us through. And because of that, we're also offered encouragement, right? I found this passage in Luke chapter 18, in verse 1, it says, And, after, and he told them a parable to effect uh, that they ought to always pray and not lose heart. And that's where our encouragement comes from. That God has let us know that when we pray to him, he will offer encouragement. That when we are on the verge of losing our heart, he lets us know. That when you pray to me, you will not lose heart. You will be encouraged. You will, I will offer you encouragement when you come to me in prayer. Request, another big thing we've talked about. Right? We see in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 21, it says, they said, to Caesar, they said Caesar's, then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God. And I really want to focus on that last part, and to God, things that are God, God's. I think all the requests we, have made known, we make known to him are his requests as well. Something that we give to him, we let him know that this is what I want you to take care of. And this is something that I want you to have your hand over. This is yours, God. I'm giving this to you to be yours, so you help me through, so that I'm not alone in these struggles, and I'm not alone to live this life by myself. And lastly, we can pray for one another. And that's a, another thing I want to stress on uh, a little bit later on in this lesson. But we see in James chapter 5 and verse 16, it says, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another, that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. There is great power in praying for one another. And there is great power for uh, the, the ability to be able to pray for one another. Because as we see here in James, right, it gives us the ability to have one another in our lives. That we can let each other know what's going on in our lives. And when a brother comes to you saying, I'm struggling with this, you have the ability to talk to God about it. You have the ability to say, my brother is struggling. He needs help. Lord, help him. And then Lord, help me because I'm struggling just as much. All of this is special communication with God. That he gives us this opportunity to talk about all these things, our struggles, our sins, things that we need to be made known to him, to pray for our brothers who are struggling. And lastly, get encouragement, because we need to be encouraged from time to time. There's times we're low on, uh, on life, right? We're walking through life and we're like, man, time is bad. But when we pray, God offers encouragement and God lets us uh, know that he will help us to the other side. <clears throat> So that's kind of personal prayer. Let's go ahead and move on to personal song. And this is kind of an interesting thing to talk about. Because uh, you think, you know, when, when you think of singing to God, you think of being together more than being alone. But there's a lot that you have to find in, within your heart. There's a lot that you have to work on personally to be able to understand singing and worship together. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit here. So what do I mean when I talk about personal song? We have to think of things and consider things like, why do I sing to him? And how does singing praises to God benefit our relationship with Him? And do I understand that worship is personal? And that this song in this sense, singing and worship, is a personal thing. It's not just something we come together to do to en encourage others. It's a personal thing for us as well. And that's what I, uh, I hope to be able to expand on a little bit more this morning. So we've got to ask ourselves the question, what does worship mean to us? And in my mind, in the way I view things, worship is our way of showing what God means to us and recognizing what he has done for us. Think about every song you've sang this morning and every song you've sang before. 
What do the lyrics have to say, and why are you singing them? Have you, can you think of a song just off the top of your head that you realize that it's a recognition to God, realizing that what he's done in your life, and you praise him for it. A lot of songs we sing are about thanks, right? And a lot, of, a lot of the songs we sing are about praise, saying, God, you are so good. God, you have done this in my life. God, thank you for what you've done in my life. We talked about with the, that with prayer a lot, but this is another way we can let God know how we're feeling and what he means to us. And it helps us connect to him and strengthens our personal relationship with him. That when we understand what worship means to us, what we understand why, why we praise God, it allows us to understand that God, uh, we have a way of letting God know um, what he means to us to strengthen our relationship with him. Because if you're not praising the way you should be, if you don't understand praise and worship the way you think, how strong is your connection with God? And how strong is your relationship with God? Because your relationship with God is also something that is personal. It's nothing anybody else can decipher for you. It's something that you understand personally what God means to you and why you praise him the way you do. It strengthens your, your connection with him and allows you to grow your relationship with him. And like I said with prayer earlier, I wanted to talk about this and stress this a little bit more with song, that it is emotional. Right? It is emotional. The meaning of our songs and praise come from the lyrics. And think about the emotion behind those lyrics, right? The lyrics show meaning and truth in the form of pure worship. Because a, a lot of times, and I especially as a music guy, can really get caught into the music aspect of the, of the uh, songs, right? I think about, ooh, that sounds good. That note hit really good, right? Or, or the, the tune of this song really flows well with how each four part goes. But really, the reality of it, that's not, how, that's not the meaning of our worship, right? And the meaning is within the lyrics that we sing and the, and the words that we sing to God. It is emotional. Think about all those songs. I have a couple of examples I want to talk about here in a minute. But think about all those songs you've sung that made you go to tears. And that's why it's emotional. I think God wants it to be emotional. Because a lot of times we struggle with it, especially as groups and congregations around, you can see that they struggle with they just sit there. They just sit there and say words, don't really think about what they're singing, don't sing with heart, and, and, and don't really have emotion behind what they're saying. It is emotional. When you sing, it is emotional, and it's supposed to be that way. I believe wholeheartedly that God wants you to have emotion when you're praising Him. I believe that's a, something we really need to understand. And the way I want to show you is through these songs. There, this is one of my favorite songs to sing. Uh, it's called How Deep the Father's Love for Us. Just listen to these lyrics as I read them. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only Son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns his face away, as wounds which mar the chosen one bring money sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me light. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart, his wounds have paid my ransom. How emotional are those words? And what do those words mean to you? And that's why I love this song so much. It speaks meaning, it speaks truth, it speaks value into why we have a relationship with God and why he did what he did for us. Every line in this, this, this song hits different for me. But especially this last part when it says, why should I gain from his reward? I can't give an answer. I can't give an answer, but this I know with all my heart, his wounds have paid my ransom. How powerful are those words? How powerful is that? That we have this ability to praise God for what he did for us. I don't know why he did it for me. I don't deserve it. There's a reason I'm down here, right? And there's a reason he's up there. Why did he do that? I don't know. But what I know is that he paid, uh, that his wounds have paid my sin. That my sin was upon his shoulders on that day. And read what it says after that. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice. Can you hear your voice sometimes in times like that? I know we just partook of the Lord's Supper, but I want to extend it a little bit more uh, into the sermon this morning. Think about what he did for you. And think about that sin that you have in your life that is upon his shoulders. And that from time to time you hear your mocking voice. And that you hear yourself mocking Jesus to people and realizing that you are a part of the world. 
but his wounds have paid your ransom. There's meaning, there's value in the songs that we sing to God. I think a song that we're more familiar with, How Great Thou Art. It says, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and see the brook and feel, gentle, and feel the gentle breeze. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die and scarce can take it in. That on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow my humble admiration and then proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. There's meaning in those lyrics. That God provided such wonders in our life. That he gave us this creation to live on. That this song is solely about praising him. Saying, Lord, how great thou art because of what you've done in this world. And the beauty that you've spread through everything. Only you could do it. And the sacrifice that you made. And what you did for me on this earth. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. There's meaning. There's power within these lyrics. And that's why we sing. That is why we sing to God. And remember, it is emotional. It's okay to cry. A lot of the times I look up to the heavens, right, when I'm singing. I say, God, when I'm singing, I say, God, I realize what you've done for me. I realize how powerful you are and what you've done in my life. It's emotional. It touches the heart, and that's where your heart's supposed to be. It's not just sitting and singing a couple tunes. We come together, we worship. We realize what God has done for us in our lives. These lyrics speak meaning. They speak life. They speak truth. And that's why we sing. So understand that. Remember that when you come together and you sing together, there's a personal relationship. It is personal and it is emotional. That you need to have that connection. You need to have your heart set on what is the meaning of your worship. So we talked about the personal side. We understood what it means to grow in our personal side of things, but now growing together. And that's what it's all about this morning. And I think there's kind of a, 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 a at my congregation in Pittsburgh, we have this theme of growing together in our life together. And I think there's a similar theme going on here, talking about uh, what it means to be a family in Christ in a congregation like this. So let's talk about what prayer and song mean in our life together and how we can grow together. So let's first talk about collective prayer, right? We talked about individual prayer. Let's talk about collective prayer, what it looks like and what it means to pray together in a congregation like this. We see in James chapter 5 and verse 16 what we just read. It says, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. And we see the power that comes when people pray with and for each other. And this is kind of what this passage is talking about. That when something is going on, you pray for one another. You confess your sins to one another. That we have this relationship with one another that we can go to each other saying, Man, I'm struggling with this. I have fallen short so many times recently on this one thing, I cannot seem to get a grasp on it. And that's why we have each other. And that's why collective prayer is so powerful. Because, yeah, you can pray for yourself, but others can pray for you also. And there's power within that. And James shows us that. that there's power. Uh, the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. And prayer does work, let me tell you that. I know a lot of the times it's, I've struggled with my prayer life so much. And I was super excited to talk about the song and worship part of it, but when I was, when I was writing this lesson, I realized, and, and it came back, that how much I've struggled with my prayer life. And it, it's hard to re remember that God is always listening to your prayers. Because there's times, man, I've prayed, and I just feel like I'm praying to nothing. But prayer does work, and there's encouragement with that. And, and it shows great value and power as when we pray for one another, and we pray with one another, that collective prayer has its purpose, and there's power within that. And that the connection we have with each other can encourage us to grow a deeper relationship with God together when we pray. Because think about it, when you're here praying with one another, you're listening to what they're saying. And it grows you deeper into investing in what uh, your brother has to say about your congregation. What your brother has to say about you individually when you pray with one another. And the power that comes between that. right? Saying we're growing together, we pray together, we strengthen each other through collective prayer. And that's the same thing through collective worship. There is value in this collective worship that we do. And in James chapter 5 and verse 13, it says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. All right, we have that pray part, but it also says, Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. 
We see that collective prayer allows us to express our joy in the Lord through song. That when we come together, if any of us is joyful, if any of us is cheerful, let him praise. Because praise is a cheerful thing. Praise is a joyous thing. We, we talk about all these songs and we sing all these songs that say, uh, uh, talk about the joy in the Lord and how that joy affects us. That when we're cheerful, when we come together to worship, there's meaning in that. And there's meaning to be with one another, to sing to God. We are a happy bunch. We talked about last week being that truly happy man, right? We are collectively happy together and joyful for what God has done for us, that we come together to sing praise. All right? Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. We can also be filled with the Holy Spirit collectively. And uh, we're going to turn over to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. And a lot of this time, a lot of times this passage is taken out of context. And I won't get much into that. I know people have their different opinions about this passage. But I'm going to talk about this passage as I feel the context is true. It says in verse, starting in verse 18, And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, addressing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. What this passage is talking about is collective worship. What this passage is talking about is coming together and addressing one another in these songs, being with one another, because it fills us collectively with the Holy Spirit. I know the Holy Spirit is also another topic that can be controversial, but I truly believe that God blesses us with the Holy Spirit. That when we come together and we're all filled together with the Holy Spirit, we are one united group with God. And here in Ephesians, it shows us that when we come together, when we address each other in these psalms, hymns and spiritual songs, when we sing together, there's power and there's value in that. And when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we're one with each other. We're one with each other coming together to praise God with one another. That's the value in it. That we have a relationship with one another, that when we come together, we are one. That's what collective worship is. So, as we close this morning, I have a few reminders to kind of recap what we've talked about. Let's first kind of address the prayer side again. When we pray together, listen to the prayers. Pray with the same meaning and realize you are also praying. I know that's weird to think about a little bit, but when, when someone's up here praying, realize that you also have your head bowed, right? You also are addressing God in prayer collectively together. That Realize that when you pray, you're praying with the same meaning. You are praying with them. You're praying with your brothers and sisters. It's a collective worship together. So don't just sit there and, and mind off the words, right? Don't just sit there and take a little nap, as, as one of the brothers is saying, an 18-minute long prayer. I know it can get a little annoying sometimes, but listen to what they have to say because there's meaning in that. That when you're sitting there for however long it is, whether it be five minutes, whether it be one minute, right? There is value in the words that are being said. Listen to these prayers and realizing that they are not the only ones praying. We are praying together collectively, and there's value within that. Let's go back to worship. Let's, let's realize that we need to sing with our heart. God doesn't care how you sound. There was one time I was uh, down at FC, and uh, bless his heart, there was one guy who was sitting next to who couldn't sing to save his life. But man, oh man, was he loud, and I loved every minute of it. And the reason I loved every minute of it, because he was singing with his heart. He was so passionate about what he was doing, he didn't care how he sounded because he knew God didn't care how he sounded. That's not what worship is about. These songs that we sing and the music that we make together is not about the sounding of the music. It's about the words that we sing. Sing with your heart. God does not care how you sound. God cares how hard you worship. So worship hard. Sing out and sing strong, truly to show how much worshiping him means to you. Because I don't know about you, but worship means a whole lot to me. My relationship with God has strengthened over the past four years, I would say, solely due to worship. I won't say solely, but it has a lot to do with my worship life. It has a lot to do with how I've engaged with the songs that we've sung and the lyrics that go in, between, in them, right? Show, how, show God how much worshiping Him means to you. That your, your relationship with God is strengthened daily because of the worship that you provide to Him. Sing with your heart. Realize what you're doing. Put your heart and your mind in the right set to realize that you are worshiping God. And you have been given the opportunity to be his child. Right? God chose you to be on this earth. And what we can do to pay him back, we, we won't ever pay him back. I'll let you know that. Right? There's no way what he did for us can be paid back. But the least we can do is follow his commands. The least we can do is show him that we recognize him. That we can show him through songs and through prayer that God, I know you're here. That God, I know I've messed up, but you have provided for me day in and day out. And that I, every time I've messed up, have come to you for help, for guidance, for strength, 
because that's how much you mean to me. And I'm letting you know I recognize what you did for me. Now, I know I'm not a perfect human, but Lord, I sing to you today. I pray to you today to show you, Lord, you mean this much to me. And it's kind of ironic I put this last point in here. It's to sit close together. I know, I know a lot of us don't like to hear that, but there is benefit to sitting close together. And it just, doesn't have, it just doesn't have to do with like being close with one another. It has to do with relationship building. Think about your personal family, right? You are not uncomfortable. I hope you're not uncomfortable sitting close to your personal family, right? You tend to, when you're at the dinner table or out to eat or whatever it may be, you're at a, a movie theater, right? You're all sitting close together. And it's because they're your family. And that's exactly what we are here. What does it show God that if you have all this space and you're spread out and you don't realize that, oh, that's my family. That sitting close to them brings us closer as a family. And it allows us to be right there with each other. Because when I'm worshiping God collectively, I'm not doing it just for me. It encourages not only me, it encourages those around me. And I want to be with my brothers and sisters. And I want to hear everybody else sing. I do. I want to hear you sing. And the reason I want to hear you sing is because I want to hear how much worship means to you. I do. I want to hear how much your relationship with God means to you. And I want to hear that passion in your voice. I don't care how you sound either. I want to hear how much God means to you. And that's the benefit to sitting close together. It brings us more meaning and emotion to hear from your brothers and sisters who worship with you. I come here to worship with you. I don't come here to worship by myself. I don't sit in a corner and just sing to myself. I come and sit with you all. And I love every minute of it. I do. It, it brings me such joy to be able to worship with one another. To be able to hear my brothers and sisters have the same passion as I do. To hear them sing praise to God, lift his voice, lift his name on high, and sing praises to him. It means a whole lot, not only to me, but it means a lot to God to see his people come together to sing with one another. There's lots of meaning and value with that. I found this quote from Arthur, uh, author Charles uh, Gradison Finney. can't say his name right, ever. Uh, it's just a tongue twister, it seems like to me. But it says, nothing tends more to cement the hearts of Christians than praying together. Never do they love one another as well as when they witness the outpouring of each other's hearts in prayer. There's value and there's benefit to hearing the relationship of God of, of my fellow brothers and sisters. I love this quote because it shows that this, the power and the love and the connection that is shown when we come together and we hear our brothers and sisters pouring out their hearts, letting God know what he means to them and letting God know what that they're appreciative of the family that they've been provided with. And this second one down here is another lyric from a song we sing. It says, Come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pastures, and the sheep of His hand, just the sheep of His hand. That's why we worship. These two quotes showing us that when we come together, it says, Come let us worship and bow down. Why? Because you are our God. You've given us this life to live with one another. We are not alone in this life. There's a lot we have to do personally to make ourselves right with God, but when we do, there's a whole lot of meaning to having a family. And I really appreciate the family here. I do. I know I'm not around a whole lot, but when I am, I appreciate every second of it. I do. I, don't, I, don't, I take it for granted sometimes that I have an opportunity to have a second family in Christ. But even though it's not a second family, we are all one together, no matter where we are, and I appreciate and I appreciate uh, what, what the vision that this church has. I appreciate the wanting to be closer with one another, having a life outside this building with one another. That's why God has given us one another, right? God has provided us each other to be a family, to love one another. And it means a whole lot when you come together and pray and sing together to worship God with one another. Growing together is special. And growing together is a crucial thing to understand that God gave you a family for a reason and that there's benefit to worshiping Him together. So remember all these things, because what it does is it gives us fellowship. And fellowship, I give a little definition here at the bottom. It says, coming together through the Lord. We all are different people, and we all like different things. I'll tell you, me and Josh Bunch, man, we, we don't have a lot in common, but man, we love each other because the Lord loved us. And we're family now, so there's that. But uh, it just shows that people are different. But even though people are different, we all come together through the Lord, and we are one. There are no differences in that. I love the Lord, I hope, just as much as you do, and I hope you love the Lord just as much as I do. Love hard and fellowship with one another, realizing the meaning of fellowship and what it means to have a family in Christ. 
So let's do some reflection before we end. I want to make sure that we get and understand what we've been talking about this morning. Are you struggling with your personal slash worship life? Has that been a struggle for you recently? Have you been at home by yourself struggling to pray? I've been there, like I said, and I still struggle with that. It's hard to pray to God. It's not an easy task. I thought it would be. I was like, how hard is it to bow your head and say a few words to God? It's difficult. But when you work on it and when you believe in God and when you trust Him and, and, and lean on the, the help of your brothers and sisters, it shows that there's meaning in that. That when you do find, because like I said, I've been there where I feel like I'm praying to nothing. But I've been there when I know, know God was there. Not think He was there, when I know He was there. And how much that put on my heart. And how much meaning that, that gave that prayer. That when I was praying to God, I knew He was listening. And I knew He was taking care of me. Then another thing when you worship, right? Have you been there before? I have. I've been there before and I just sit in the pew and, and sing a couple, couple words, right? Don't really take in the meaning. And I get too caught up in the, in the music. It, it, it distracts me from the true meaning of this worship. But have you struggled with this? Has it been a struggle with you in your personal life? And is that hindering you from a full engagement when gathering in fellowship? That your personal life is struggling so much in these two things that when you come together, it makes it even more difficult to be a part of the family. Is that something you're struggling with today? And how can that change today? How can what the, what the Lord has told you today, this is not me, I give all credit to God, this is what he's provided for you this morning. How can these words change you today? And how can the family that he's provided you change for today? Like I said, I've gotten to know a lot of people here recently, and I respect uh, and love everyone here. And I know I've gotten to know the elders a lot, and I know there's people here who want to help you. And it's, it doesn't just start with the It's not just the elders, I promise you that. Anybody you look at in this room, I hope and pray that they will want to be there for you. And I will tell you, a lot of, this, a lot of people in this room already, I, I will have no problem going to if I need help. And that's why we have each other. So how can that change today? How can you lean on each other? How can you get help today? Because there's resources. And there's people ready to help you. And what they'll do is lean you towards God and show you the true way to have a relationship with Him. Are you struggling this morning? Have you, have you yet to become a Christian? Have you yet to be a part of the body of Christ? Because that, let alone, is the most special thing. To be fully indicted into Him and fully committed to the Lord. Is that something you haven't done today? And if you need anything today... If there's anything that, is, uh, that you're ch having challenges with, is there anything in your prayer, song, worship life, whatever it may be, it doesn't even have to be about this lesson. If you need anything today, please, please let us know as we stand and while we sing.